if I don't look at it. No, it's not there. I could be content to believe that it's just a shadow, a trick of the light, but does it matter? Does it make it any easier to lie to myself, to pretend it's not there? No. PM. It momentarily goes off there. We will be right back with among my the neighbour returns home. He's been concerned. Here. Mainly for the sake of his children. You see, many happy families can often fall victim to strange occurrences. I assume that he was primarily for his children's safety. People aren't so accepting of people like Good me. Evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to Among My Souvenirs with me, your host, Paul Lockley. The time is a little after 10 30 pm. We now take you back. The light keeps flickering. I'd be willing to believe the bulb needs changing, but when it happens at the same time every night, that's not a coincidence. I could be content to believe that when the phone starts ringing, it's because someone genuinely wants to talk, but I know that when I answer it, it's the same dead noise I hear each time I do. A low, rattling breath. If I stay on the line long enough, I find that the noise stops, which to me seems indication that even the monsters grow tired of our presence. Fuck! Okay, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please, please, just, just, please stop, make me stop! Society sees us as lunatics, lunatics and freaks, who can't fully understand ranges of human emotions, but it's interesting because in reality, we see more than they do. We know what truly lurks behind the shadows of that happy family home, the home they believe keeps them safe at night. They believe that having a locked door keeps the creeps and the abominations away, but they're already there, waiting. In the walls, under the floorboards. My dear, monsters are not under the bed, they are inside the bed. Light, radiant energy, visible to the human eye, makes people feel safe. Always interested me why people believe that monsters only hide in the dark when in reality we all know they don't hide anywhere. If you could see what I see, you would know the neighbour you all know, the one who asks how you are, who sees you almost every day, watches you, they all watch you. You assume the idle small talk is a friendly attempt at socialising and appearing normal, but have you ever questioned their real intent in asking you these questions? Why they would ask you if you slept well the evening before, or as if they couldn't see your sleep state as they climbed over your garden fence and examined what you keep in the fridge? Tell me, have you ever stopped to check how much of your underwear your personal items remain each morning? Ever had moments where you wonder where something was but can't remember moving it yourself? All questions we ask ourselves, but never stop to consider the real cause. The man on the radio reminds us that it's 10.40pm. He doesn't remind us of the date. Days are meaningless, you see. Prior to 46 BC, nobody even cared, and the year only had 10 months. And yet society forces us to know information such as this. It forces us to live under the confines of the Gregorian calendar. If you tell somebody that you don't know what day it is and you don't care, they lock you up in the asylum as quick as blinking. And they call me crazy. They're the crazy ones. We all have a role to play. I know that's why they want me looked up. It's because I've figured it out. I know their secret. They think we don't know. The concept of time is a lie. It's a lie. It's 
stop to think. We, all of us, are all being watched, constantly monitored from our homes, our streets, the towns, the villages, the prisons, the loony bins and the sea. As you're sat there in your homes right now, they're watching you through that element that you believe is time. <laughs> oh my god And what do they monitor through, do you ask? I'll tell you. What does every single house contain? A surefire way to check the time. They hang on your walls. You put them there yourselves. You are opening up your lives to interpretation, to invasion. They even tried to give you a hint with the term clock face. And thanks to Peter Henline who created the watch in 1509, you are now able to be monitored wherever you go. Tell me, friend, why do you think they call them watches? It's me, man. They've watched you your whole life, and here you are watching me. Why don't you come out? Come and face me. Come and face me. Mr. Clemens, this is Officer Jenkins with the police department. Can you open the door, please? He's lying. He's not a police officer. He's here because he knows. Don't let him in. Mr. Clemens, we've had a few calls about some strange behavior and screams coming from your residence. I know you're in there. Please. Open the door. Mr. Clemens, I just want to talk with you. We can do it the easy way, where you let me in, talk with you. and we can sort everything out, or the hard way, and I'll return with a warrant. I'll give you a moment to consider your situation. Okay. Mr. Clemens, I'll return shortly. I knew this would happen. It was only a matter of time until they set it up, and now they're coming, and I bet it was him. The call, the neighbor. He's told them what I did. Carl, get Flint on the phone. I think I'm crazy, but I don't need to be, because I have you. <laughs> <laughs> 